East this week for a first ever visit to the beautiful McDonald Linden Hall. It's a new venue, John. Mm. You've been out on the course. What do you make of it? I think it's a little beauty actually for the boys. I mean, it's just, well, what was it? 6,846 yards to be precise. Mm. Part 72, so in modern day standards, not a monster out there, Kit, mm. but it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, big old trees lurking around, some lots of tight tee shots, some wide ones in places. You've got some big run outs as well. Greens are tiny. The wind was up yesterday. It's not so windy today, so the boys will be able to go low. I think it's a course you can go low on, uh, but it's essential to be really accurate off the tee and find those greens. So John thinks this strategic layout is there for the taking this week. Now let's hand you over to your commentators and see how this final round unfolds. Thanks, Kit. Yes, this is the first of four events that make up the new McDonald series which also includes events at Portal, Spey Valley, and in late August, at Hill Valley. At McDonald Linden Hall, we've so far seen a five-star performance from Callum Fife, one clear of Ashley Mansell after 36 holes. With me in the commentary box, it's John Morgan and Gary Alice. And fellows, it's worth noting, as he showed at last week's Golf Catcher Championship, Alfie Plant relishes the role of chaser. Well, he does feel absolutely amazing performance at Dudsbury and there we go starting where he left off yeah that's three pars and a birdie on the fourth for Plant who improves to seven under as a consequence now the left-handed Allen this one just a whisker of movement on it as you can see just from the right edge of the hole there Beautifully done. On the third, 584 yards of it. Richard Mansell putting for an eagle. A couple of puts and he will balance the books. Because he bogeyed the first hole and in that he won't be alone. As John Morgan explains, it's a really tough opener. Well, here we are at the McDonald Linden Hall Golf and Country Club and this is the first hole. 419 yards, par four, slight dog leg from left to right, and it's straight uphill, and it's a really tight tee shot. I want to show you the course plan, just to give you a butchers of what the boys have got to play with. I mean, you can see for yourself in the distance, you've got the bunker, comes into play at 223 to carry it on the left-hand side, but if you carry that, you could be in the long rough and thick trees on the left-hand side. It's a really tight tee shot, probably one of the hardest tee shots, I reckon, we're going to have all year. First tee shot, you know, nerves are jangling, you step on this one, and you've got to nail it, and you've got to nail it straight. Now, I think a lot of people will be hitting this three iron, maybe a driving iron, get it past that bunker, leaves himself quite an awkward shot in, but you're not going to really be able to see the bottom of the flag from there. I think driver is the play. Tee it down a little bit low, hold it off a bit, probably aim at that nice big tree in the distance and try and get a big one up there so I can see the bottom of the flag. Come on, Jenny. Look at that, little drifter, just slightly on the tree, just needs to veer off a little bit on that side. Nah, he's all right. I tell you what, that's just cambered around into the middle of the fairway. Probably going to have about 150 yards in from his second. What a pro. I'll tell you what, though, this really is a baptism of fire. It's playing over half a stroke on average, over par. Yeah, Gary, you were there, my friend. I mean, it's cool. Oh, what a tough hole. Yeah, absolutely right. John. This and the tenth were two really, really difficult uh, tee shots, as you uh, as you mentioned. A tremendous wind up here from Callum, going with the iron as you suggested. Good release of the wrists through, but he may just, with that extra flick, have turned it a bit left, I fancy there. Yeah, I think he's bunker banged. He has left the Allen behind the tree. He's going the aerial route, getting up quick. Oh, that's not a bad shot from there. Mm. 
Now we've got a couple of unrelated Mansells both in contention today. Ashley Mansell in the final two ball, and this man, Richard Mansell. Birdie on three, back to seven under where he began. This first fairway has proved elusive today and Fife is the latest of our players to miss it. He's in this left-hand bunker. He's got just shy of 200 yards left to the pin. It's all uphill. There's quite a steep bank on it as well. You might just be able to see on the horizon a sort of white spot marking the green. The pin is right of that. I don't think there's any way Fife can go for this and it's certainly not worth the risk this early in the round. I expect him to lay this up and hopefully trust those wedges to save his par. Now this one's a tough one. Got to get it up quick if he's going to get it all the way. I'm going with Kit's plan. Lay up to a nice wedge shot. Bit too much sand that he's only just got out. And he's a long way from home. He is in trying to sort of lean back to get a very quick lift. As you can see, he's caught the sand first and just sort of ballooned it up in the air. Now James Allen, he's played this second hole superbly, the man from Chelmsford Golf Club. Birdie on day one, Eagle on day two. But a plain old par on day three. In the first round, he was out in 30. Wow. I'd love to replicate that now. Cool, wouldn't he? So here we are with the result of Fife's rather puffed up in the air bunker shot on its way but looked like it's on its way right into the face of that bunker. That could be plugged. Well, what you see is what you get here at four, 159 yards, water all shy of the green, and down the left we go. Beautiful green as well. Slopes from back to front and encroaches on the left-hand side down, but if you over, slightly overcook it on the left-hand side, you could be swimming. And there's a drop zone down there about 80 yards from the green, so that's where you'll be dropping it. If it was windy, it would be the seven iron, but it's not. I got the eight iron out, just tuning it up nicely on a nice bare light and a nice swing needed. Right then, nice easy shot, strong follow through. Come on, Johnny. Well, I like it. Nice and easy. Come on, land softly, ball, land softly. Oh, beautiful. And that's a good golden chance for a two. And for any of you skeptics out there, that was first take from Mr. Morgan. Yeah, it's not always, though. I've got, to, uh, I've got to level with everybody. I get that question a lot, Phil. <laughs> More often than not, John, I've watched you. As we see Richard Mansell firing one into the pin. And uh, as you said, John, Richard is a very articulate young man and he's always got a quip. I like uh, bumping into him on the golf course. He yeah, he's a good lad. amuses me. <laughs> yeah, he's a good lad, Gary. He really is. Look at this, short-sided. Don't think he's going to be plugged. He's not. But look at that, all running down to the front edge of the green. And yeah, on a down slope, tight pin, never easy. Mansell won't be in the mood for a quip though, because the ball we saw landing on the green was his provisional. This is the original tee shot, down deep in the woods. Could be a big number here. Yeah, spectators looking on at the final group, up the hill, bogey effort, outside chance to, well, at least drop one. Don't want to be dropping two on the first hole when you're the leader of a night. Oh, that's going to be painful. James Allen, second shot, third hole. reachable par five and here it comes as you can see almost almost yeah that was a lovely shot that's a good chance now for an eagle now ashley mansell man from my golf club clevedon shot course record yesterday seven under to get him into the last two born well there we go nice putt to start settle the nerves it was for a bogey though the final pairing making Real heavy weather of the first. Yeah, always nice to hold a putt now. Richie Mansell. 
Zooming in. Oh, grazing the left edge. I have to take that on the chin. Tough one to take, especially when you come to this fourth. You feel like it's a golden opportunity for a birdie. An easy par. I think it shows just how thick the bushes and trees. If you miss round this golf club, you're not going to find the ball. Yeah, you're right there. And well, pure example, here's number two. Beautiful hole. One eagle on it. Someone's old there. Second shot. You've got the big ditch. You most times out nine times out of ten, you'll be short of that. Coming in with a mid-iron to a very kind of shallow green, but wide green as well. Slopes from back to front. Beautiful hole. It's two fairway bunkers in two holes for five, and this one is no picnic either. It's just trickled in, so it's on a downslope. It's going to want to launch low. There's just that little tongue of rough sticking in raised up, which you will have to be wary of. And at 196 yards to the pin and into what is now a stiffening breeze, this is another really difficult shot early in this final round. This is beginning to qualify as a nightmare start for Callum Fife. Looks like his playing partner sitting pretty in the fairway, Ashley. Trying to cut this one. Oh, come right out of it. Down the right hand side, no contact whatsoever, and in the in the rough we go. Yes, as you said, Phil, it's a, almost the worst possible beginning. As we have a look at Alan with his putter from the fringe, ran pretty smoothly on. This for his eagle attempt. And uh, should be no trouble for the birdie. Yeah, it should be no trouble. I think he probably fancied that one, though. Uphill putt for his eagle. Now, five. Third shot out of the jungle on the right hand side here. Wipe those cobwebs away. Clear that brain. Come on, we need a good shot. Oh, this is nice. Holds that one. You forget about the rest. But those on the leaderboard should not forget about James Allen. He's got this to take the lead. Back in 2016, as an amateur, he made the cut in the Dubai Desert Classic on the European Tour. Wow. Well done, Alan. Now Fife to save his par. Turn. Oh, it's another drop shot. Feeling, man. Frustration kicking in, understandably, that's going to be a double bogey, and you would assume bogey start. Yes, a real struggle thus far for the 21 year old rookie professional from Glasgow. I wonder why his favourite course is Leopard Creek. Maybe this chat with Kit will enlighten us. Callum, you represented Scotland a lot at amateur level. What did you get to do through that? Through that, we travelled all over the world to play in different tournaments over in South Africa, Argentina and stuff. Um, represent the country as well as big pressure, stands in good stead for like coming out here and playing for playing for cash and stuff. You were in the initial Walker Cup squad that was announced last year, but you took the decision to turn pro. Yeah. Why did you do that? I was going to stay amateur, that was the plan, but then me and my girlfriend had a baby. Uh, everything changed, obviously I had to go and try and earn cash. But at the same time, I wasn't going to go pro unless I had the funding. And what, golfing for life, they helped me massively. Without them, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, so that I just got lucky in a sense like that as well, to be here today. How much does being a father now not only change your perspective on golf, but on the world in general? Oh, crazy. I, I never thought it would change this much. Like, it's amazing. Like, it's when I can't be bored getting up to practice now, I go and practice, because it's not just for me now. You know. So You finished fourth last year at Newmacca as an amateur. What can you take from that experience that you can apply today? Just notice that I've been there kind of and never got the job done, but I was there, thereabouts, and never really gave shots away. So I know that I can, if I just believe in myself, then I'll be there, thereabouts, and you need a wee bit of luck. No fortune so far, though. With overnight pace setters Mansell, and especially Fife, stumbling in the early running, we've already seen big changes with man of the moment Alfie Plant climbing to second and James Allen now the outright leader. Will the Chelmsford golfer make sure that at Linden Hall the only way is Essex? Find out after the break.
hitting your head against a brick wall. That's chipping for many an amateur golfer, but don't worry, here's Kit and Callum Fife with some advice. One of the things that the players have to be wary of here at McDonald Linden Hall is the small greens. That means you are going to miss some during the course of a round and you're going to need to chip well to get up and down. Callum, that is something you've done really well this week. You're yeah. positioned fantastically. We've set up a reasonably straightforward chip and run here. You've got plenty of green to work with. If you were faced with this on the course, how would you go about playing it? Well, first off set up, I would start on my left side. Well, if, first off I'll visualise the shot, see where, how much spin I want to put on it, how much roll it's going to have on it. So I'm going to try and pitch it halfway and just let it release out. So my weight's always on my left hands just forward of the ball on my left knee and then it's just a turn from there and um, not much hands at all you just turn like a putt and let the club do the work certainly scared the hole if you do short side yourself as you will around here and you do need to play that higher flop shot yep. how are you altering your setup and technique to do that well first off it's, it's all ball position for me so first off i'd started that chip there was off the left um, now I just move this ball way up in my stands if it's like a, if I'm exaggerating it. Keep my weight still on my left, but I want my hands in the middle of my body. It looks like they're behind the ball, but they're not. It's really because they're in the middle. They're not like here. They're still in the middle of my stands, and then I'll just turn and and hit it. Let the club do the work again. Some really interesting tips there from Callum. So whatever situation you find yourself in, try what Callum has just told you, and that should help you get up and down far more often. At the Motor Kelly Masters, Five now shares fourth, tied with playing partner Mansell. And there's also a tie at the top. With a birdie on the ninth, his third in succession, Alfie Plant reached the turn in 32 and joined James Allen at the top of the leaderboard on 10 under. Allen's now tackling the sixth, the most miserly hole here at McDonald Linden Hall in terms of yielding birdies. Yes, Phil, another difficult hole. There's several here. And uh, where the pin is today, it's uh, not that easy to get the ball very close. As we can see, online, but somewhat short. Our first view today, John of Matty Lamb, still an amateur. Yeah, good man. Learning the ropes here amongst the professionals. Beautiful par three, this one. Water down the left, right near the green. Very tight green as well. Oh, and he's played a beauty. Absolute beauty. And he's playing partner too. So, pretty long effort. 30 odd feet from the front of this green. Too much movement, it's more about getting the pace on this one. And as with a lot of these greens, you tend to think there's going to be a lot of break. So sadly, we didn't get line or length right there. No. Oh, shake of the head. Now, Lamb, come on. This here too on this seventh. Beautiful hole to do it on. Just breaking off the left hand side a smidge. That yeah. slots it in lovely. He's been selected for the England team at the European Men's Team Championship in Sweden. And you can see why. Back to level for the day. And to save his par, Allen. Ten under to stay there. Got this one just inside left. If anything should break. Oh, right across the face of the hole. Whew. I thought he had that one, Gary. <laughs> it really did swing. Must have swung five or six inches in running the last six inches. I suppose you could argue it was just short of pace. And that means this man, Alfie Plant, is in front. Could he go back to back, John? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. He's got all the shots, Alfie. He really does. Coming in low there, not quite getting full contact on the club as he would like. elevated tee on this delightful par three Alan's tee shot towering shot Ooh, nearly pitched in the hole amazing how it found a little bit of a hard bounce 
Left an awkward chip in a second. Yeah, very much so. No, big bumblebees round here. So you see Thompson coming out of the bunker short side. He's played a great shot there. Look at that. Another local lad doing well. Now we saw the tee shot nestle down. A horrible lie, this. Yeah, he's putting it, Phil. Which I find bizarre, and that's the stroke of it. I mean, I don't know what the reason was behind there. Just didn't fancy the, the lofted club. Yeah, strange as we have a look at Richard Mansell's eagle putt trundling across this green long way down to the hole. Good try. Yeah, good putt. Mm. Playing partners said good try, good pace. Very good. From about 60 feet, that wasn't bad. You know, plant, not from 60 feet, but not, not far off. Could be 60 feet, actually. This one looks like it's breaking. You can see where he's aiming. He's aiming this a good five, ten feet right at the hole. Now here's where it's going to start breaking. Needs to slow down and takes the break nicely. Good putt from Alfie. It really was, and it will need a good putt from Allen to save par on the seventh. Left to right. I think he's got every reason to feel aggrieved, John, because the tee shot really didn't deserve that. No, it didn't. I mean, it pitched about 10 foot shy of the pin. You think it's going to spin. Didn't. Hard banks, goes through the back. All of a sudden, from nowhere, you make bogey. Another drop shot. That's frustrating. And it means if Plant holds this, Gary, he's two in front. Yeah, and I expect him to. He's a solid man with the, uh, with the putter. Yeah, no trouble at all. It's good when you're full of confidence. It is. He's used to the big stage. We know he played the Open and he's done extremely well in that. Thompson. Oh, nice stroke that was in the heart of the hole. Now here's another title candidate. Andrew Wilson from Rockcliffe Hall to the turn in 33. He also birdied 10, but then bogey 12. I saw Andrew Wilson on Sunday when I arrived. He was practicing because he was on his way down to open qualifying. Well, he did rather well in Nottingham, winning the qualifying. Yeah, he did indeed. Mansell slots it in, goes on the left-hand side. Yes, you're right about that open qualifying. He shot 69-68 at Hollinwell. But that was really shy. Just 91 yards into the par 5 13th here for Plant. It's 91 yards downhill and down breeze. These greens are really firming up now, so he's going to have to go full at it with a lob wedge, I think, as much speed as he can, open it up, because he's got to carry it all the way pretty much pin high. If he lands it on the green, but just short, there's a slope at that front edge that might kick it up to the back edge of the green. Well, come on, Kit. What's he got? Coming in seriously high. Is he getting the spin? Is he carrying it far enough? He does. Ah, he's played that so well. It's going to be a slick putt coming up down the hill, but you can see his technique here. Interlocking grip. Done Tiger and Jack Nicholas well. Alfie uses it. That's a nice swing. Keeps everything so simple, Gary. Yeah, the club just swings up and down on line as we look at Andrew Wilson tidying up. Here's the putt. Interesting. Alfie does the old claw, pencil grip, and then goes back to normal. I'm totally the other way around. It's breaking off the right-hand side. Oh, that's for too much borrow. Didn't get it. You can't sink them all, but try telling that to plant at the moment. He feels as though he can. Five golfers find themselves in a logjam for second spot. Plenty more remain in touch, but the chances of Alfie Plant capturing back-to-back -back Euro Pro Tour titles have risen considerably. Will Plant rocket to the top of the Race to Desert Springs 
and become the season's first double champion. The Motor Kelly Masters story continues after these. Majestic McDonnell Linden Hall is a secluded parkland setting, but the Northumberland coast is just a short drive away and Kit couldn't resist its temptations. We're down on Almuth Beach and I'm joined by a man who's going to be spending quite a lot of time at the seaside in the next couple of weeks. Andrew Wilson, he's qualified for the 148th Open Championship at Royal Port Rush. How much are you looking forward to that? Oh, massively. It's, uh, it's been a good season so far and it's obviously a great way to carry on for the year and yeah, hopefully I can continue my good form and get a good result. Quite a journey to get there. Just what do you go through in the qualification process? Uh, probably more than what most people would think. I had a, a quite a tough wait around that regional qualifying. I had to wait around five hours for a playoff. Uh, fortunately got through that and then uh, Tuesday was a tough day. Yeah, 36 yeah. holes in a day. It's not often you do that as a pro. How gruelling is it? Oh, it was, it was awful, especially that when, when you're an amateur, you play quite a lot of 36 holes in a day, but as a pro, I've not, I haven't done it in six, seven months, and especially having to wait around afterwards, yeah, it was, it was tough. <laughs> what has the response been from friends, family, other golfers? Yeah, it's been amazing. It's been really overwhelming. I've had like an absolute stream of messages and phone calls, and yeah, it's been quite hard to get back to everyone, but hopefully I've done them justice. What could making the cut and having a good weekend do for you so early in your professional oh, career? It would be, be absolutely massive. It would kickstart your career. Uh, as far as I'm aware, you'd probably like, it'd help you getting into other events. It'd probably improve my challenge to a category, which hasn't given me much this year, so it'd probably give me loads of opportunities going forwards. The standard has got better and better on the Euro Pro Tour every year. You're one of three guys from the Tour this year who have qualified. How well do you feel this prepares you for a challenge like an Open Champion? Uh, not to be rude, I think it's prepared me better than I thought it would, because the standard on Euro Pro is actually a lot better than I was expecting. So you go from the highest ranks in amateur, then you go to Euro Pro. Now I thought it'd be a bit of a step down, and actually it's probably been a similar standard. Like the course, uh, very scorable. You, you have to go out there and play really good to shoot double figures for the three rounds. So yeah, I think it's prepared me really good, and it gets you in quite a good scoring frame of mind. So you have to go out there and. You're not just scraping it around, you have to go out there and make birdies or you're nowhere to be seen. Andrew, magnificent effort to get in. We're all rooting for you. We'll be checking for your name on the leaderboard. Best of luck over in Ireland. Now let's hand you back out to the commentators on the course. It would be pushing it to say the sands of time are running out for Wilson, but he's got just four holes left to turn the tide here. That's because Alfie Plant leads by two in the Motor Caddy Masters. How's he feeling? Well, he's chatting with Kit. Alfie, four under par for the round. What have you been doing especially well today? Uh, putting been pretty good today. Hold a couple of clutch putts early on and then um, made some good birdie putts. Bogey free as well. How satisfying is that in quite tricky conditions, really? Yeah, it's nice. You know, still a long way to go. Um, the front nine's a little bit easier than the back, so um, you kind of feel like you can get away with uh, no bogeys on the front nine, so pretty good. Have you got a number in mind you'd like to get to or are you just taking it as it comes? No. I thought 13 would give the runners a good run for their money. Um, but look, anything can happen on the back nine. As you said, it's pretty tricky out here. So um, yeah, just got to stay in, just stay in, stay in it to the end. Will you be keeping an eye on the leaderboard? Yeah, of course, yeah, you got to, aren't you? you know, um, you'd be gutted if you miss an opportunity just because you didn't know, you know what was going on. So um, might be a good thing, might be a bad thing, I don't know, but um, I will be looking, yeah. Another great charge, keep it going out. Cheers, thanks, Kit. Well, at the dog leg par for 14th, Alfie slightly blocked out by the trees on the right hand side. Green tucked into the trees as well. Breezes up, taking a high over them. Bending from right to left. Oh, and that catches the bunker. And oh, that's going to be feet out the bunker for his third. Yeah, that's going to be very awkward. As we have a look at Neil Fenix. Third shot on the 11th. First time we've seen Neil today. Been playing very well and gets that one to check up nicely. Loving family life now though, Gary. You know, got got kids and absolutely loving it. Different perspective on the game as well. Coming out here, 
He thought he would uh, make it to the challenge store, no problem. But anyway, this man, Wilson, slots it in. Just going back to Fenwick. Fenwick, he's, you know, some player. It's just nice to see him back out here again. And the smile is still glooming for... Look at this, one foot in, one foot out. Oh, this is nasty. Yeah, this is awkward. Pins right up the back of the green. Oh, wow. I tell you what, that wasn't much more, and that was going to be absolutely sublime. That was unlucky. Here's Fennec from Dunbar Golf Club. First round, 66. That's a beautiful golf course up at Dunbar, and that's a beautiful putt. Enjoying himself out here today. So we have a look at our amateur lamb. This long putt for his eagle, chasing it up the green. See, swinging in, swinging in, swinging in. Oh, how big was that? Huge putt. But that's the longest putt hold all year. Won't be surprised. Now Plant to save his part. Up the hill. Slightly off the right hand side can be aggressive. Get oh my goodness, put the brakes on the final third. And that bogey means the amateur has hit the front. Matty Lamb, ten under, the man to catch. Lamb isn't the only local doing well. We know about Andrew Wilson and also Reese Thompson. But he's found the fairway bunker here on the 11th. Oh, and I think he caught that, trying to get it really clean. I think he's got it so thin that it's just caught the top of the lip. And as you can see, ended up about 40 yards short of the green. He's battling for par. John Morgan is on the 15th. Well, here we are at 15, probably the most beautiful hole on the golf course. It's definitely their signature hole, and it's a par three, absolute perler, 173 yards. I mean, look at it, pretty as a button, surrounded by trees, water shy of the green as well, and the green's tight as you like, probably 10 yards wide. That is it, at a slight angle and very slopey. A green you don't miss. Awkward up and down if you do miss it. Definitely middle of the green required. Tee it up in the middle. Looking at it, do I hit the easy seven or do I go and rip the eight? I'm ripping the eight. Right, in we go. Tee up, good swing on it, hold me finish. Hopefully it's a good one. Right, slightly lagging left. Now I need that to carry and spin. Carry and the spin. There it is, pin eye left. Take that all day long on the dance floor. Jobs are good one. Coming off his first bogey of the day, John. This one is a real test. It is, and you don't really feel it on the tee, but look at the trees behind him. I mean, they are blowing a hoolie. That ball gets above the trees, it calls havocs, it moves hard in the air. Not an easy green to hold as well, but my goodness. It's a tight, tight green, tight uh, target to go at with all these conditions to contend with. We saw Richard Mansell double bogey the fourth hole. Well, then came back-to-back -back birdies on eight and nine so he's back in the ball game he certainly is Phil well, that was a little bit unlucky again it just dug in if you pitch right on the fringes of these greens they will dig in whereas if you land on the greens you can get some firm bounces yeah you can't now feet after that bogey at 14 can he do the big banks back it's a tall order from downtown he's left that a bit short and oh, a little bit of work to be done from about three, three and a half feet. And now to Andrew Wilson, who's just beside the bunker on the 16th fairway here. At 215, 16 yards to the pin, uphill. Pin's right at the back of the green today. Another good swing, John, isn't it? Up and down. It is. That, that wind, though, just playing into off the right-hand side, Gary. And it is a good swing. You can see why he's qualified for the open. And that wind just calls in that one to come up shy and to the left. A 
really big put for Plant that if he wins today, more than likely he's going to finish in the top five of the Order of Merit at the end of the season to get promoted to the Challenge Tour. Yeah, you would say so. Now Thompson down the right side after that shot out the bunker, like you said, Gary. About 40 yards short of this green, maybe a bit more than that now, looking at it, but that's going to be a fast putt from there and the frustration kicking in there. Yeah, certainly frustrating as we look at James Allen's second shot. So just drawing it into the pin for the left-hander. There it comes, pin high. Nice one. Yeah, that was a very good shot. Not much greener work we've done well there. Now Wilson just dodged the bunker, just shy of it, coming in high, not getting a stop required, and that's gone through to, well... It's not actually a bad lie. It looked like it might get a bad lie, but he might fancy his chances chipping that one in from there, but short-sided. He's not happy. Yeah, this was a very difficult spot out of that grass up and over the bunker. Uh, Richard Mansell all the way up the hill. Slow putt this one, gets it to within pretty much, you would say, give me range. Sure he'll knock that one in. Of course, back on the ninth, we've just seen James Allen give himself a really good eagle chance. He's something of an international golfer these days, playing a lot in South Africa and also the Middle East. And before the round, he had a sit-down with Kit. Were there any surprises when you got to those European Tour and Challenge Tour events? The scoring was major, diff massively different from sort of all the amateur stuff I've played before. You know, I think a lot of the times on the amateur events you play these really tough links golf courses and you get brought up on pars a good score and then all of a sudden you've got to shoot 20 under for four rounds and that's something I'd never done before so it was a little bit of a different mindset and I just had to deal with everybody else going low, you know, it took a little bit of time to get used to but I think I'm over that now. <laughs> You've played globally this year and in recent yeah. months, Sunshine Tour, the MENA Tour in the Middle East. How challenging is it to go from country to country in different styles of golf course and still perform each week? I think that's, that's again, that's something you just have, you learn along the way really. I think the big difference is, well, especially from South Africa, your altitude, uh, which makes a big difference and the grass is completely different. So sort of short game is, is different to being at home. But then again, you know, I've, I've grown up here, like, you know, I know how to chip out of the grasses. So I shouldn't really make too much of a big deal of it in my head. You know, I just go back to what I've always done. But yeah, it, it, is, it is different. I can't, you know, I can't lie, but you've got to adapt, I guess, haven't you? With that in mind, how well do you feel the elite amateur scene in the UK and Europe prepared you for life as a pro? It, 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 yeah, it definitely did. I can't say it didn't. You know, I think it's um, putting four rounds together wherever you are in the world is, is a challenge. Um, but it's just a competitive edge, you know, you need, you need to be good at that. And that, that gives you that, you know, there's, there's no doubt about it. And I can tell you with Matty Lamb's bogey on 10, Alan's got this for the lead. Yeah, lots of doing and throwing, Phil. Off the right hand side, breaking in. Oh, on its last breath, gets his eagle. What a putt, new leader. Gary, the eagle has landed. Certainly has there. The eagle dived into the hole. Yeah, I like how he came across. Very confident man. Now, Wilson. I feel the trials and tribulations, what's gone on in this hole. This is still for Birdie if he chips it in. And he's got about a three, three and a half footer for his par now. Thompson, after his trials and tribulations, this longish putt for his par, not a lot of movement on it. Well, he got it dead on line, but uh, as we can see, it ran out of gas a foot short. Yeah, this time of the round, he can't be doing with drop, drop shots. You've got to be uh, making those birdies. Now, Wilson to save his par. Yeah, nice stroke, keeps it nice and simple. It's been extremely fluid at the top in this, the closing round of the Motor Caddy Masters. Not so long ago, Plant led by two, but now he's tied second with Lamb and Wilson, because with that timely eagle on the ninth, James Allen has regained the lead as he prepares to tackle the back nine at McDonald Linden Hall. This time, will he stick in the lead? 
More from Northumberland after the break. McDonnell Linden Hall measures almost 6,900 yards, but golf is a game played in a four and a half inch space between the ears. We're talking about psychology today. I'm joined by sports psychologist Dave Charlton, our very own John E. Morgan, and tour player and three time European Tour winner Michael Lundberg. John, we're looking to get into our heads, so where better to start than in yours? What challenges as a professional sportsman do you face mentally? I think expectations uh, that you put on yourself. I think quite a few things, you know, uh, new surroundings like going up the levels, want to achieve all your ultimate dreams and goals and figuring out for yourself what actually makes you tick. You've been on the tour for 25 years. Have you noticed a change in attitudes to psychology? Not much. Uh, people know it's good. The problem is most people don't know how to train it. If you ask the tour pros how many percent it actually matters of the game, they say anything from 60 to 90 percent. If you ask them after that how many percent do you train it, that's a big difference. Dave, Michael mentions perhaps tour pros aren't training psychologically always as much as they should do. From your perspective, is that something that you're seeing? People come to come to me as last chance saloon in some respects. Yeah, they, they work on the technical aspects till yeah, till they go to sleep basically and then yeah, it's it's the last port of call in some ways. I used to punish myself when I hit one and it did last three or four holes. That would make you go bogey, double bogey, bogey. Instead now it's bogey, par, birdie. Or I've eliminated a couple of shots out of my card, which is massive in this game. I think it's all about performance. You don't have to play great. You just have to learn how to manage your game. Dave, you're working with a player who's in the field this week. What are the specific challenges and, and solutions he's been looking for from you? I suppose one of them, you, you've touched on it there, is the, like the overthinking side of things. Most golfers do actually have the answers to those questions themselves. It's, just, it's my job to, to actually bring that out in them. If we talk about visualisation, a great little drill there is simply see the shot hit it on the, on the range, hit 10, hit 20 balls, just doing that and you, you're really like feeding that skill and you're going to get better at it. Most of the time people train too much technically and if you don't do those mental exercises on the range, your brain only knows how to think technically and it's easy to go backwards and uh, you, so you need to train it every day if you know what to do. Michael. Dave, John, thank you so much for that incredible insight. Hopefully you can apply some of those psychology laws the next time you get out on the golf course. Being in a good place mentally is vital for winning golf, and there's no better place than sitting atop a leaderboard. Occupying that position in the Motor Caddy Masters, it's James Allen, one clear of Andrew Wilson, Alfie Plant, and Matty Lamb, with several others, Reese Thompson among them, not out of the picture yet, and Thompson is on the 12th. Yeah, let's have a little look at this 12th hole, 388 yards. The bunkers that we're just going past, to carry those is 250 yards, which if these players give a good boom away with the driver, no problem. Uh, the green is not that deep, but sits quite wide, and, and as you can see, sort of sits 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Um, a birdie opportunity if you get the tee shot away. Yeah, I kind of find on this hole, Gary, if you land it too far short, you can catch this downslope and it'll scuttle all the way to the back of the green. And, well, that was a complete and utter duff there by uh, Thompson. Now, open the blade right up. This is the aerial route for Mansell. Not a bad touch, just going on a little bit more than what he would like. Coming off a dropped shot on the 10th. Lamb is also in danger of exactly the same at 11. Oh, sounded a nice crisp strike. Is he getting a spin? Yeah, getting too much spin. Could just hear that little click as he hit that shot there. Now, this is going to be a fast putt here, uh, Gary. Birdie comes over the slope and down. There you go, Gary. Well done. Well done, 
That's very well judged because he had quite a little rise to come over there and a double breaker. Yeah, now Lamb after that crisp approach, too crisp, up the hill, off the right. And we've seen it time and time again, everyone kind of leaving their putt short on this hole. I think we're going to see a lot of this man in the future. So after his good chip up, Richard Mansell, this for his birdie, at eight feet, just off the right, trickling it down, and whoosh, right across the face of the hole. We've seen that a few times, Gary. You'll be disappointed in that one. Berating himself, hit it. <laughs> now how about this from Andrew Wilson to get the double digits under the card? Oh, that is huge, Phil. That is huge, my friend. You called it. Gets the double ditches. Look at that. No blemish on the front nine. 33 out. And 34 back in. Two under again. That's a round of 67. Five under par and double digits. Phil, can't be bad. Allen's now been joined at the top by Wilson. The pair of them, one in front of Plant, who's about to take on the tricky par 3 17th. Yeah, beautiful hole 17. Look down on this green. You can see the water on the left-hand side for the players. Not really in play, but the green is where it's all happening. Really topsy-turvy. Lots of subtle breaks. You miss it. It's not an easy up and down, but a little bit heavy-handed. Bit pulley if you're a righty. That water really does come into play. And for Plant, it's absolutely essential he gets up and down after missing the green. He's really close to that water, Gary. Yeah, he's a bit lucky there. He must have, uh, his heart must have been in his mouth watching the tee shot. This is a good chip, though. Just a touch firm. Leaves him that to tidy up. Well, here we are at 13. It's a double dogleg par five. It's a whopping 568 yards long, and I'm going straight over the corner. Tee my ball way up on the right-hand side, taking it over the trees, and see where it goes. Here we go. Ripper, look at that. Oh, all guns are blazing. Let's go up and see where that one's gone. Well, you see me come over the trees with my drive, tried to big draw it around it. I got that, but I'm still on the right side and I'm stymied by all these beautiful big old trees right in front of me. I mean, tall order, could be a nine iron, eight iron down on the left hand side and wedge it on. But do you know what? You come down here, you're four or five shots behind the leader, you know, with about five, six holes to go. Do you take it on here at 13? I think you do. I think you do. I mean, it's a tall order. We've got water down the left, shy, right, and over the back, there's thick, rough, and big trees as well. So that could cause havoc. But, you know, if you're under the collar, and you're chasing, pull your sleeves up and give it a good old go. That's my six iron. Got a few gaps I could go through. I'm not going to deal with that because it could come seriously undone. I'm going to go over the right, try and big high draw and land it on the green softly. That wind is slightly off my left hand side. So I'm going to draw this one, stall it in the wind, hopefully. Anyway, wish me luck. Here we go. Here comes the bend and the hook. Keep hooking, ball. Keep hooking. Oh. Let's go up there and have a closer look. I can't quite see it. Well, that's probably one out of six shots would actually come off, but when the chips are down, six holes to play, couple behind the leader, you've got to pull off something special. This is the kind of shot you've got to do. Repair your pitch mark, hit the middle of the green, gives yourself an eagle chance. Game on. If they ever made a sequel to Bend It Like Beckham, how about Maneuver Like Morgan? Yeah, you can hire me for that, I don't mind. I haven't got his hairdo though, I need a wig. Now, big high cut coming in from the other direction. Oh, what a shot. Now, for you boys and girls at home, this green is fraught with danger. Slightly out of sync, slightly pushy, pulley, anything like that, you will find water. Yeah, it really is very difficult. As we have a look at Alan coming out from under the trees, punching on forward. Using the ground, using the slopes, all to his advantage. Back on the 13th from Bolden Golf Club, 
After a conservative second shot, it's Rhys Thompson still targeting a birdie. He turned pro last year after being County Durham's leading amateur. And that works. Definitely does. Great shot, great control. Coming in. Now behind the trees at 14, Gandhi. Up and over we go. Wind strong off the right-hand side. It's going to be pushing it over to where Alfie Plant was earlier in that bunker. Oh, and he's played an absolute beauty. Yeah, that was a very, very fine shot. As we now see Tim Rice's third shot. Stay there. Don't go back down that ridge. Sit. Ah, just winds its way back. A must make to retain title aspirations for Plant. Job done, but now another tough task ahead. The 18th, he must birdie it, and it's the second toughest hole on the course. Now, Rice, probably the biggest practicer out on this tour, has been for many years, loves the game. Tracking, good putter. Oh, doesn't quite get that one. Yeah, very meticulous player, Tim Rice. Takes his uh, time over all his decisions. That he does, Gary, that he does. And a proper journeyman as well. Been out here for many years, on and off the tours. All tours now. You can just see a little bit of a faint ridge there, which Gandhi's having to come up over. A little bit of break off the right-hand side as well. Here it comes. Oh, right. slots it in beautifully. And he looks like he's surprised. <laughs> man, oh, man. For the man from the Isle of Man. Man, oh, man, I wouldn't mess with that man. He's a muscly boy. Now, Richard Mansell following that wonderful second shot that he shaped in round the trees on the other side that we saw John do. And... Oof, <laughs> That ball had to have turned there. <laughs> it just had to. My, I did a little jig by the side of you there. My legs went all funny thinking that was coming in. And he was going to get an eagle on probably four. An extremely difficult hole to hit in two. And he's made mincemeat of it, Gary. Yeah, it deserved an eagle, those shots. And uh, that was a good result that deserved slightly better. <laughs> Yeah, well, Thompson would be able to go to school. You would have seen how much that broke from Mansell. So just a little bit less. Oh, he pulled it straight away. He knew it. Pulled it. It's gone a bit further past as well, and he's still got a bit of work to do. Now, Alan, joint leader. This to take the outright lead for birdie. We know what this butt does. It's slow. It's off his right-hand side. And there it is. Another putt coming up shy. Playing with Johnny Caldwell. So what about the leaderboard? Well, promotion candidate Ryan Campbell puts in another promising performance. Plant could yet lift a second Euro Pro to a trophy in as many weeks. But up top, it's James Allen and Andrew Wilson. The latter having set the clubhouse mark in this, the Motor Caddy Masters at MacDonald, Linden Hall. Northumberland is rightly recognised as a terrific county for golf and one of its finest courses is Macdonald Linden Hall where currently on the 12th James Allen shares the lead in the Motor Caddy Masters together with Andrew Wilson already with his feet up scorecard signed so many could yet claim the silverware including Rhys Thompson he's playing the 14th three off the pace Yeah, fairway bunker here for Thompson on 14. Coming out of that, over the trees, got to gauge the wind that's off his right-hand side. 
Oh, and just missing a green on the right. Well, it'd be kind of lucky stars. He didn't clip any of the trees coming over. Now Mansell knows what he's got to do. Down the left-hand side here, Gary. Yeah, this is good. He's got very good uh, control of the ball flight, Mansell. You know, you could see there, even on the TV screen, that he'd managed to flight it in low, keeping it under the wind, pin high on the top level. Good stuff. Yeah, it is good stuff. He's on the back tier as well. Now, Alan, double digits. Coming in high, needs to land it soft, needs the spin. He doesn't get the soft bounce, doesn't get the spin. And, oh, that looks like it's gone into a horrid lie over the green. Up on the 18th, Plant's found the fairway. Has to find the green and slot in the putt. The 18th really is a very, very tough hole here at Linden Hall. You've got to be down the left-hand side where Plant was. And a difficult pin today just tucked behind that bunker to get close enough to give a birdie putt. But he's given himself a chance. He's, he's a man in the mission. Before that ball landed, he was already walking with his back. Gandhi now on 15, a par three. Beautiful tee. Stuck in the trees, green perch way out in front of you, about 160 yards away, and that is all down the flag. What a perler. Over on the right, where we saw Thompson shot from the fairway bunker. Just got a judge coming up over that slope which he's done very well oh he's done a great job there that wasn't easy out of the rough got a, a ridge going away from you as well not easy now Tim Rice now, he knows how to hit the ball low you want to keep this one out of the trees don't want to get above them and let that get ball get affected by the wind easier the better Tim with a beautiful shot oh he's tracking go on ball oh beautiful shot no, and Timmy would slot that one in. Rather a nice demonstration there we saw. Very good, boys. As we go back to Richard Mansell. After that very good second, onto the top tier. Not much break, maybe just a whisker from the right side on this one. All about the pace. Yeah, there was a whisker from the right. Just shoved it a bit too much. He really is a leaderboard regular these days on the PGA Euro Pro Tour. Don't discount him just yet. But down with Kit on 12, the leader is Alan. The wind is really starting to pick up and downwind Alan's approach got a couple of big bounces through the back of the green. He's got an interesting decision to make now. If you just come in a little bit closer, you can see the way the ball is lying with that thicker rough behind it. It's going to make it tricky to get a wedge down there and guarantee the contact. You could see him take putter, but perhaps more likely a little belly wedge hitting halfway up the equator of the golf ball. Well, I would have gone with the belly wedge kit, but it's not. It's putter time. It's not easy for this left-hander as well. The fringe is more in play with the hill. And it's come out. I mean, Kit, what do we know? Oh, he's made that look so easy. After his wonderful tee shot, Tom Gandy, just down at the left lip, just, just slid to the right. Oh, dear. So will Gandhi's playing partner, Tim Rice, have better luck in trying to make his two? Of course, Rice was a winner on the Euro Pro Tour last year at East Sussex National, the Four Business Championship. He's a former Irish PGA champion. Only his second start of the season. He's first. He was tied 10th at Donington Grove. And he's heading for another top 10, John. He is. Tim's a journeyman and a good player. Once he's in the groove, he's hard to beat. He can wear you down. And Thompson, can he make a majestic up and down from the right-hand side? Good chip to here, off the right edge. He gets it. Little fist pump. That could prove to be very important. And even more important, this birdie put on 18 for Plant to tie the lead. Yeah, come on, Alfie. Off the left. 
tracking. Oh. Lacked a little bit of line and a bit of pace there for Alfie, but that's, you know, a par ending score there on 18. That's a tough hole, and that's four under for the front nine, one over for the back nine, and around a 69, nine under par. And you can see just how much he's thinking to himself, what could have been. Nine consecutive rounds in the 60s on the Euro Pro Tour for Alfie Plant, but he's so, so disappointed. Six holes left. Allen is still tied at the top with Andrew Wilson. This remains wide open with numerous players still in the trophy hunt. They certainly are as we scootle forward to Tim Rice's very long effort on the 16th here for his eagle. And it's running well, it's running. Oh, he can't believe it. Looking very ruefully, neither can I really. It pulled up there so quickly, it was a bit like Flintstone's car. And they used to put their feet out the bottoms to stop them. And bear in mind, had that dropped, he would have been nine under. I know, right in it, with two holes to play. He's going to feel pretty hard done by there. That looked like it was in. Now, Richard Mansell. This is no more than a nine iron in his hand. Big hitter, Richard. Oh, he's pulled it. That's why it's gone extra, extra distance. And it's a long putt coming back from the fringe. And you can see that flag just fluttering a little bit, showing you how downwind it is. It is a very, very narrow green, and you just... Sometimes it's not easy on the eye to just hit a dead straight shot, which is what this hole demands. Oh, look at this, pitching at the front edge, getting the hard bounce, scuttles up to near, near enough to Rice territory. Now a birdie on 13 would give Allen the outright lead, but those trees, again, a stumbling block. All they can do is just go around them. Hope to make birdie the conventional way. Where the tee is, it's almost impossible to avoid having them in the way for the second shot. It is. There's two tee boxes over there. I mean, uh, it could have been either one of them, but... Uh, yeah, not easy. No, Mansell needs something magic to happen. Ain't happening here. And he's got a tough putt coming up. Now Neil Fennick, third shot from the right-hand side of this 16th green, up and over the bunker. Green runs away from him, but there is plenty of green. And it's a pretty good effort, that. You can really see the winds howling away on the top of the hill. And Thompson, we know this slightly bright breaks off the right-hand side, right edge. Oh, he's got it. Great up and down on the previous hole. Makes birdie here at 15. And off to 16, he goes with a big spring in his step. Not been a good day so far for Jonathan Caldwell. He started the day just two off the lead. That, though, will ease the pain. Should result in a birdie on the 13th. Very experienced, a former Walker Cup player from the Clandy Boy Club in Northern Ireland, who was, of course, promoted from the Euro Pro Tour in 2017. Johnny, how was the experience of playing on the Challenge Tour last season? Yeah, it was good. Um, I've obviously played Challenger for a few years, but, but it's been quite some time, so it was a little different adapting to being away for two and three weeks at a time. But, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it, yeah. Having played there a bit as a slightly younger man, what was it like to go back a few years later? It was nice. It was obviously a goal of mine to come out, finish top five here and get that category 13 and to give it another go. Um, I didn't play particularly great all season. I had like four or five good weeks um, that gave me a, well, what I thought was a, a reasonably good uh, category, but it turns out uh, I find it quite difficult to get into to events. What does it take to have that level of consistency? Because obviously you're not always going to have your A game every week you turn up to tournaments. You, a good short game really you know um you're never going to be fabulous every day tee to green so you've got to be able to kind of manage your game know when you're not playing great have a certain shot you can go to that you know kind of where it's going to go 
um, missing in the right places. Just a, a bit of probably a bit of maturity really and where to miss shots and knowing that you don't have your A game and you can't take on certain flags and just kind of be sensible about it. Does that skill set and that ability to grind almost become even more valuable as you move up through the levels? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, salvaging uh, powers from bogey positions is incredibly important. Um, again, having a good short game when you're out of position, take your medicine, bogeys are better than double bogeys. You know, anywhere you can save a shot, um, one shot around is huge if you're playing over a, a, a four round tournament or a three round tournament, three or four shots is massive. And if Mansell could gain three shots on these closing holes, he might well be the winner. Oh, a little fist pump there from Mansell. That was important. No Allen. Third shot to 13. Hit a big drive down the right. Blocked out by the trees. Had to lay up. Coming in high. Needs the spin. Tight right pin today. Oh, sublime. Two great shots in there. Now, Fennec has this to move one under for the day. Just a single bogey and a single birdie thus far. Not out of the reckoning yet. Now, following that very good pitch in, keep it inside the hole. Now, just a misread. Yeah, we've seen a lot of people from that side just over borrow. It does look as though it'll swing a lot. Cool. It does, Gary, it really does. You can see why they're getting all caught out by it. Now, this is the perfect putt you want. Straight up hiller for your birdie. Maybe just going inside left, firm. Bang. There you go. He started the day eight under. He stood on the third tee, two under, after consecutive triple bogeys. He's being rather stoic to fight back. The finished Wilson and the still battling Allen are inseparable at the apex of the leaderboard. Plant's now tied third with Fennick. Last year, Tim Rice birdied the 18th to win the four business championship. This time, he needs to finish with two birdies to match Wilson's total. On the par three, he's launched that high into the air. Using the slopes, I don't think it was very intentional, but the net result is really rather good. I think it's very good. I like how when he sets up to the shot, it's a bit like Jack Nicholas. Just uh, moves that head looking back a little bit, Gary, and uh, seems to just trigger his shot, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think it is a trigger. As we look at Gandhi. It's also very nice ball striker. He certainly hit a couple of cracking shots on the par threes that we've seen him hit. Yes, we have. Gary, now Thompson's going to be stepping on this tee any minute after his nice couple of putts hold. And this is the 16th beautiful par five, 530 yards up and around the hill from right to left. That bunker on the right, you can see, is about 300 yards off the tee. Wind off the left, pushing down that right-hand side. Trees on the left-hand side also in play if you slightly pull it. But this green, really awkward to land it on and keep it on as well. Very narrow, at a 45-degree angle as well. Need a high, tall, rising iron shot to come in and land like a butterfly with sore feet if you want to give yourself a nice chance for eagle. He's got a degree, Thompson, from the University of Lancashire in golf management. He needs to manage his golf ball here. Yeah, as John told us, this is a very awkward angle that this green sits at, particularly with that wind coming across the green. Steady on. That's a very good result. Almost as good as you can do today. I think so, Gary. Anything online, you can just see how brown it is there where the heat's kind of burnt out the, the front fringe of this green. Very hard to pitch on. As we've seen Mansell down the right-hand side. This is second big drive off the tee. Yeah, that certainly is a big drive up past that bunker. He's got a good look at that hard bounce. And so many golf balls we've seen today have come across the green 
and tumbled into that right hand trap. Yeah, very popular place. Now after that great strike into 17. Gandhi looks like he's aiming just about six inches outside left. Is it breaking? No, it stays there. He slightly pulled that as well. He's a little bit bemused on that one. I know I am. On 14, Allen not best placed. Looked a nice strike. That was looking pretty straight down the flag. Just another 40 feet to go. Stay nice and tall. Nip it off the top. The lip there not too great. So I think he went for the punch you want. Now Gandhi failed to get his birdie, which he desperately needed on 17. What about Tim Rice? Bang. So he remains in the mix, barring holding his second shot on 18. Gandhi doesn't. As we return to Richard Mansell, you'll remember his golf ball toppled into this bunker. Quite thin the sand in that bunker, so he's up, just tried to nip one out and he nipped it a bit too well, got too much stop. Yeah, getting the extra layer on, layer on now. Feeling a bit nippy out here, closing stages. Sun's disappeared behind the clouds. We saw that monster eagle put from Lamb on nine to take the lead. Since then, three bogeys in five holes. But that will improve the mood. Well, not off. What a great shot. Well controlled as well. Now Thompson for eagle. This gets him to double figures if he slots this one in. It's a tall order. It's a good roll, it's a good roll. And you'd fancy him knocking that one in for birdie. Keeping the heat on. Alan has a good 40 feet up the tier for his birdie here on 14. It's uphill steeply and into the breeze, so it's going to be slow. I think that might help him though, because I'm having a little bit of trouble reading it. Every angle I look at, it looks like it's doing something different. So he's going to be seeing the same thing. The fact that it's slower up the hill means it's not going to break as much. He can probably just go left edge firm and hope he gets his two putts and escapes with the par. This really is stroke play at its best. So many still in with a chance, but Alan, he's in the driver's seat. He is indeed. He's got holes to play. Up the tier, as Kit said, very slow putt. And, well, that is uh, the knee knocker now to save his part. Not an easy green to read putts on. No, Mansell after that, well, too fine a bunker shot. Getting loads of spin coming up shy. This for his birdie after a monstrous drive. Gets it. Big fist pump. Rightly so. And he's charging. Booyah. He trails by one, as does this man, Neil Fennick. See what, it's the same bumblebee hanging around the camera, man. He's following him around all day, he must be covered in honey. Now, Fennec, tall high rising. About a seven iron here. Oh, didn't weave his little wheelie head out from beyond that little hump there, and that's gonna be a tricky up and down. Now, following that good tee shot, this is Lamb. Yeah. And converts the good tee shot into a great birdie. Good man. And don't write him off just yet. All right, come on, Neil. Out with the club. Don't be out with this chip. Only trailing by one. Still in this. So Paul First Banks kicked it way to the right. And he can't believe it. You can see, just looking back, he's thinking that's coming back the other way. I think there's an argument to say this is Alan's most vital put of the day. Definitely. Right edge putt for Alan. Our left as we look at the screen coming off it. Oh, beautifully. Well poised. Well balanced. And, yeah, well done.
So Fennec, following the chip that kicked off to the right, is 10-footer down the slope, running well and running in. Oh, we're seeing some butts hold today. So many questions remain to be answered at the Motor Caddy Masters. Multiple golfers could yet be crowned champion, but up top, Alan's got the destiny of the event in his fingers, whereas Wilson can only wait. What a cracking tournament, and what a cracking finish in store. The sixth of the 16 tournaments that make up the 2019 Euro Pro Tour schedule remains a cliffhanger. Alfie Plant's not done quite enough for successive victories, but still, a large group of players could yet snatch the verdict with a spectacular finish. Andrew Wilson, his round complete, leads together with James Allen, who's arrived on the 15th tee. Well, I man is beginning to favour a bit of a cavalry charge playoff at the end of this. It uh, could easily be that way. As we uh, look at the 15th hole again, and another beautiful shot here from Alan. Dead on line. And we've seen that putt once or twice. We have indeed. Now, what do you think of this swing, Gary? Uh, I think it's... It, again, they all swing very well. But you can see, I think he just tries to favour keeping the weight a little bit more on his right leg to hit that little bit more punchy shot there. Doesn't move off behind it. Probably what he wanted to do, keep it under the wind. Definitely. Flag out for Rice. He needed to pop that in, but he doesn't. And so, Andrew Wilson, who was out nine groups before the final pairing, continues to swerve title challenges. I know, unbelievable. Phil, now great drive from Lamb, gone for the big high shot, trying to land it all the way, obviously taking on the flag, and look how hard that is. Impossible pin to get close to, got to be slightly lucky if it's going to get on that left-hand side of that green, but that's an awkward chick coming back, Gary. And I've got a question for Gary, who set these pins on the back nine? Well, somebody's responsible for them, who's only sitting about five feet to your right. So I'm afraid it is yours truly's fault. <laughs> yeah, we're all pointing a finger at you, Gary. So are these players. Good pin positions, anyway. Thompson coming in low. Looks a nice neutral ball flight. Not a lot much swerve in the air. Gets on the right side, but, oh, at least a club, club and a half out. Everyone's scared of that water that looks around the back. Here we go, keep those hands forward. Plays it, bumps it on the fringe, scuttles down. Oh, I thought that was going to be better than that. Again, it just shows the difficulty, chipping back into the wind, coming out the rough. It must run, and it didn't. It's a lovely collection of par threes here at Linden Hall. The lengthiest of them is this, and it's only 176 yards. Yeah, they are great par threes here at Linden Hall, and that would have looked phenomenal. Straight down the throat of the flag, but at least 25 feet short. Now Rice, to finish nine under for a par on 18, taps that one in. What could have been kind of down the last? Look at that finish, three birdies in a row, and then a par on 18. Shoots a three under par, 69, nine under, one off the lead. Alan's birdie attempt coming up this 15th green. Another player just over borrows a fraction. Johnny still can't achieve breathing space. Yeah, but I tell you what, he's got the 15th, uh, 16th coming up, the par five. There's every chance he might be able to get that breathing space now. James, 10 under par with yeah. three holes to go. How would yeah. you feel it's gone so far? Quite good. I've Played quite solid. I made a couple of nice parts and I made a couple of mistakes, but no, I feel good. I feel good. Are you aware of exactly how things stand at the moment? Yeah, I just looked at the board. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what's going on. So, but it's, I've got three holes. I'm going to try and put 
you know, four or five good swings. You'll hear in the clubhouse and then we'll just see what happens when we come after that. Does knowing the state of play affect how you, you do these next few holes? Um, no, not really. No, I've, I've got a game plan and I'm just going to stick to it. You know, I know where I'm trying to hit it, in, sort of on the fairway, so whatever the situation is with the conditions and stuff, I'll just match it to hit it to there. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Thank you, Simon. Good no luck. worries, thank you. Well, chirpy chappy says in his hobbies he loves socialising. You can see that. Now, Lamb, the amateur, to get to nine under. Yeah, slots it in. Great stroke. Awesome Two holes to play for the young man. After birdies on 15 and 16, this across the green effort for Rhys Thompson. It's unlikely, I know, but it is for a share of the lead. And it is, and it's more than a cricket pitch length. Some putt that. Great putt. That's very well judged. Yeah, Richard Mansell there giving a words of encouragement, saying how good that putt was, and rightly so, to get it within gimme ranges from, well, 70 feet away. Well played. Now, Fennec. Knees birdie. Trolls by one. Up and over the tree we go. Needs to be magic. It's not a bad shot at all. Straight over the stick. He liked that. Fennec's got that to tie the lead. Mansell's got this to tie the lead. Oh, get in there. The fist pumps are flying for Richard Mansell. Keeps the flagging. Wow, two storming off to 18th tee. Flying, I think the flag stick perhaps helped that one. Gathered it in, curled it down into the hole. Back to Neil Fennick. This is a must. Off the ridge, running well. But doesn't disappear. He missed his first three cuts of the year, then tied 15th at Camberwell Park, aided by a first round 65. This, though, without any shadow of doubt, is going to be his best outcome of 2019 as he just about gets his par put in there. Nine under, well ensconced in the top five. Just came up short, though. Three are now tied at the top while only Thompson and Lamb, of those on nine under, could yet bridge the gap. But still, a marginal favourite, given that he's got to play that par 5 16th. It's Alan. Soak it, where's his tee shot come to rest? Alan has just 216 yards for his second shot here into the par 5 16th. It's a fantastic chance as well. It plays slightly uphill, but we are strongly downwind now. He'll probably be able to get an iron back there. And with where that pin is pretty central and right at the back of the green, there is plenty of room to land it on the front edge and release it up to the hole. Well, we've seen it, Kit, and I beg to differ, my boy. I think you've got to get a little bit lucky. If you're going to go straight at that flag, maybe just pitch it between the bunker and the green, just slightly on the upslope, kill it a little bit. It's the only way you're really going to get it stopping. Maybe feed it off the left-hand side is a good shout. And that's in the bunker, shy. Such a hard putting surface. Ball's not able to stop on this putting green at 16. So Lamb now, his tee shot on the 17th, what can he show us? Oh, nice shot, finding this green beautifully. They are, but they're all very sure, and it's that strong breeze into their faces on that 17th, really catching them out. A good drive off the tee in the opening for Thompson. What's he got for his second? as good as he likes. You can see he was slightly blocked out by the big trees. Well, Alan's ball's finished on the upslope of the bunker, so he's going to get plenty of elevation. And just sort of got stuck too much underneath it there, fluffed it up. That's, oh, that's absolutely not what he wanted. Yeah, that is the mistake when you didn't need a mistake. Too much sand here, Gary, as you can see, complete underneath it, 
way too much and well getting the distance not required and that is well i don't know if it's fallen back into the bunker but if so it's still going to be awkward up and down and andrew wilson is watching all of this with real interest especially because richard mansell on 18 has driven into the water yeah, and it's a tough one though, Phil. I mean, the tee shot is a must find fairway and you got hit it over roughly about 260 yards to give you this gap that you see now coming up and funnels up towards the green. You know, you've got water to the right, thick bundle on the left hand side. I mean, that tee shot is massive. You get this green as well, slopes from back to front and, you know, it is all about the tee shot and Richard, well, in a spot of bother. Yeah, it certainly was. And of course, pumped up, it's very easy to just hit that extra four or five yards, which he's obviously done and gone in the water hazard, which lifts him then completely blocked by the tree. Oh, did you see that though, Gary? I mean, that was probably no more than four or five paces from being absolutely brilliant and give himself a chance of a part to stay at 10 under. Yeah, it's a cruel game. From there. So if Lamb can get that, he needs a birdie on 18 to Ty Wilson. He's hanging on in there. He is indeed. No ball did not fall back into that bunker. It's a birdie effort just up against the collar. We're hearing from Kit. Down the hill rapid. That's got to slow down. Oh, this is a time to regroup now. A few errant shots wonder whether he's a bit excited tried to force that putt in maybe going up the hill now Mansell this delicate little chip from there oh, what a good effort that's it's cruel 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 and yet another contender falls by the wayside Wilson could yet do this he could I, my money's on him now uh, Phil I mean, I just my heart goes out to Richard Mansell there, played so well, but it's not over for this man. The amateur lamb slots this one in, gets a good drive down 18. You fancy it? Oh, no, I spoke oh, too know. soon. Sorry to put the jinx on you, buddy. And he knows it. Won't cost him any money, but the hurt is still there. It is indeed. Now, Thompson, what kind of could have been and it still could happen. Lengthy one for Birdie to get to 10 under. It's a great, another great pace putt again, but just shy. It looks like he's very happy with his performance today. Look at that, two great pace putts. He's done on 17 and 18. You see that round of golf, just getting off to a shaky start, getting them back on eight and nine for a level par front nine and then Coming back in two under for a round of 70. So we return to Allen and his woes on the 16th here. This has got to go. It's like sand trickling through oh, your fingers. It's world class. World class Found the fairway. Didn't make birdie. Actually made bogey. I'm sure Wilson can't quite believe what he's watching. Yeah, that'll feel like a double bogey, though, from where he was on the ferry. Now, Mansell for bogey. And that's nine under. It's kind of what could have been. The fist pumps coming in were brilliant. But that double on four will prove really costly. And then, well, the bogey up 18, finding the water. Round of 70, nine under par. Don't worry, mate. It's coming. Yes, he's third top ten of the season. At least that's consolation. Mansell falters at the last. Wilson dodges another bullet, and with Allen running up that six on the 16th, is it possible that the Northeast Zone, Andrew Wilson, is going to plunder the Motor Caddy Masters title from nowhere? Well, he has to put it all behind him now. Good swing, dead aim. But as you've said, John, they've just got to take enough club to get up to the back of this green. Just feed off a little bit, not as much as I thought. But great drive by Lamb. Still a long way back, having to come over that tree with that pin that's tight right. Oh, hands off it straight away, going for the big cut as he got it. 
Oh, that's a very good shot. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that is a good shot. As you say, he was a long way back, but he... Uh, you don't get so much manipulation of the golf ball these days, but that was a good bit of manipulation. Yeah, I think he's enjoying playing in front of the camera. He seems to be thriving on it. Now, Alan, down the slope. And that's a great pace putt. But that's going to be a par. And off to 18 he goes. Now, following that lovely bend in, can he... Everybody's just aired on that low side. They have indeed, Gary. Nice to see the spectators out. All giving their support for the PGA Euro Pro Tour. And this young man, amateur, finishing eight under. Eagle on nine was beautiful, but the back nine just, oh, done the damage. So quite simply, Alan needs a birdie. In a way, being left-handed might just be, make this tee shot a fraction easier. But he's straight over to that right-hand side. Alan has 156 yards to the pin here on 18, and he has by no means the optimum angle. He's over here in the right-hand rough. The pin is tucked just four yards on away from the right edge of that green. He does have a bit of a gap. He'll be able to see it. If he was a couple of yards further left or further right, it would be a totally blind shot. He can see the target, but can he hit it? The odds are against Alan making a birdie. In the last 10 groups, we've only seen two. One from James Ross, the other from Andrew Wilson. All righty. Well, it's a good light. This is all he needs. Good strike, get the height. Needs to land it on a sixpence. And I tell you what, he took all the trouble out of play. That was a good play, but he's left himself a 45, 50 footer down the hill. But it's a chance. It's an outside chance. As Wilson paces around, Kit's down there on the green. Alan has to hold this birdie putt here on the 18th hole, but it's not an easy one. It's downhill. It's going to swing considerably from left to right. It's a good 40 feet, but there are no prizes for leaving this one short. Interested spectators looking on. Kit's given us all the information. We can see there he's aiming away three, four feet up to the left of the hole. It's running well, it's got to go, keep coming, keep coming. Very good effort, but his race is run. It's been a great week. He'll tap that one in. Playing with Johnny Caldwell. And yeah, what could have been 16 was the biggest point there. He had a chance to go one shot clear with a birdie on it instead, making bogey. Claps all round, though. The 16th cost him, no doubt about that. Not been kissed by success. Alan, though, contributed to quite a day, which saw six golfers share second, some more than others wondering what might have been. But having started the final round, five shots off the pace, the spoils are claimed by Andrew Wilson. What a week. You qualified for the Open on yeah. Tuesday. You come in absolutely exhausted, don't get a chance to play any practice rounds, and now you're stood here top of the pile. How incredible has this week been for yeah, you? Yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, best week of my career by a mile, and yeah, just hopefully I can have a good week off and recover and yeah, see what the future brings, really. Looking back on today's round, what was the key to you today? Uh, I sort of just took the mindset. Like, I just wanted to go out and shoot a number, and mm -hmm. if it didn't really pay off, I just wasn't really going to be too bothered. So I think that stand, like, stood me in good uh, ground for the round and just went out and tried to make as many birdies as I could. I've hit the best shot I've ever hit in my life on 13, um, and then I've made a push at the end as well. I've hold two, like 25 feet and 40 feet on 16 and 17, just to give me a chance. Mm -hmm. And the last, I wasn't thinking about the water, I wasn't thinking about anything. I, I hit driver, I was trying to make birdie. I knew Andrew was in at 10, mm -hmm. and I knew 11 was going to win. Um, and I was at 10, so I didn't want to try and lay back to a six iron and play safe because that had, that was, was, wasn't what I was doing to get into that position. And I hit a good drive and it just leaked a little bit and went in the hazard and made a good bogey in the end, but again, it's um, not a lot I can do now. So.
Close to victory at Brockett Hall in the season opening IFX Payments Championship, Wilson goes one better, close to home. His many rewards, a first prize of £10,000, his maiden Euro Pro Tour success, and zooming all the way to second in the updated Race to Desert Springs that continues to be headed by Alfie Plant. But at the Motor Caddy Masters and Linden Hall, Andrew Wilson finished top of the charts, the early pace setter in the McDonald's series.